What up, Romans? <laughs> Alright, check it out. Hey, yo, what up? The name is Nerd Grows. I got the buttery turf flows. The way I make these herbs grow. This one's for all my tent homies and my earth hoes. Yo, 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 yo. I, wait, what, what are you doing, man? What? Start the podcast. Alright. What up, y'all? Episode 22 of Nerd Grows Podcast. Holy crap, it's been, what, two weeks? It's been crazy where <laughs> in my life. I just had a lot of family stuff going on. We also had, my son was on spring break, so I took off a lot of time to watch him. And then having those days off, I fell behind at work, and I've been going hard at work, all of the different jobs I do. So it's just been busy, mostly just family, playing catch up. <laughs> So obviously, right at the top, huge shout out to BGG for doing the episode last week. I think he did an amazing job because breeding cannabis is something, you know, me as a new grower, I barely know how to grow the plants, let alone how to make new strains. And there's a lot of acronyms and terminology that breeders throw around. So the whole thing in my head is kind of esoteric. So I thought BGG did a really good job of breaking down the basic terminology so at least when i go to buy seeds i kind of know what i'm getting into so the only thing i went on before listening to his episode last week was like the higher the f value the better that's all i was working off of i knew nothing about anything else and now i'm a lot more educated so i hope you guys enjoyed it too also if you ever want to re-listen to just that middle chunk of last week's episode i did put it up as a separate youtube video on our youtube channel and we got a lot of videos going up over there i just recorded one where i put together a tumblr composter we'll talk about that in a little bit grateful has been putting out his updates for his window garden and also how his backyard is going i wanted to post videos in my backyard as well but it was like embarrassingly bad <laughs> I'm like 20 hours deep into the backyard and now it's just starting to look decent, but that's a different topic. But on the point of YouTube, I want to say that this week we hit 100 subs, which is awesome. Thanks for all the love and support. It's really hard making cannabis content on YouTube because a lot of it gets instantly age gated. So if you don't have an audience already, it's hard to get discovery when half of your videos, people have to be logged in and 18 and up to see that said, obviously don't want kids looking at cannabis content but at the same time it does really hurt your impressions and your reach when it's not being sent out to people that are 18 21 whatever but they're not logged in they're not verified or anything like that so it gets difficult and in celebration of hitting 100 subs on youtube we dropped a new shirt it's reminiscent of the album Milo Goes to College by The Descendants. That's an album that both Grateful and I love. And it has our logos on it. You can get it in either like a pale blue or gray because that's kind of reminiscent of the original album cover. And you can also get it in Nerd Grows or The Grateful Gardener. So have your pick. I'm probably going to raffle one off soon. I just haven't figured out how or when I want to do it. But go check it out up on our T Public store. You can see our new descendants classic punk inspired shirts we have a few other punk rock shirt ideas we're kicking around right now but you'll see them as they come out next i want to talk about not my grow specifically but other things i've been doing for my grow i recently did my second run of sous vide rosin to make carts and it went a lot better than the first run the first run i think i did it for way too long and too low of a temperature this time i upped the temperature and took off like 75 percent of the time given the carts to just friends and family. I don't really vape cards myself, but a lot of people I know prefer cards over flower. I'm one of the few few flower heads left that I know, at least <laughs> in my immediate vicinity. And so far, everyone says that they've been great. As we talked about in previous episodes, I was previously making cards with rosin and PG to thin it, and those ended up getting clogged like after a week or two. And the batch I just made, I made five carts and one disposable and it's just rosin there's nothing else and it came out really well the only thing i'm kind of disappointed in and this doesn't really have to do with the cart making process but more of the rosin process is that usually when you get carts from like a dispensary they're like very golden like a light beer color kind of and they're like very translucent where mine's more of like dark brown like not in a nasty way but just noticeably darker so if you guys have any tips on how to get lighter rosin I'm sure you'll have to like sacrifice yield with that, right? My assumption is like, what, less less heat and a tighter knit bag 
would be my gut feeling. If you have any tips on how to get lighter rosin that would like look good in a vape cart, let me know. As for my grow, the Compton Kool-Aid and the Lemon Runts are both finished. And I've already dried them, bagged them up, gave half of it away already. <laughs> so those are done. In the big tent, I started Mango Smile from Mephisto and Ice Latte from Speedrun. And they're doing pretty good so far. The Mango Smile actually has two heads. Like it looks like I LST'd it when I didn't. Now, the only thing I could think of is that when it was going from seedling to getting like its first set of leaves, it fell, it fell over in the middle of the night. And then in the morning, I propped it back up and it's been fine ever since. So I don't know if that was enough LST to form the second main cola. I don't know what's going on with it, but it looks really cool. It's like a letter, it's like the letter Y <laughs> right now. I'll put up some pictures on Instagram. The ice latte is looking good. It's a little small. I feel like it's only on day 15, but I still feel like it's kind of small. So I don't know if it's a slow start or if I stunted it. I'm going to keep an eye on it over the next week or so. The mango smile is pretty big for, I think it's on day 20 right now. And it's probably the biggest day 20 I've ever had. So I think that one's going to be fine. Except for the two heads. What am I going to do? So my small tent currently has no cannabis in it. I currently have all of the vegetables that I plan on transplanting outside in there. I have the light on low. Most of them haven't popped yet. They're still germinating. But I left them on low and just like a normal light schedule, nothing crazy. And I got so much in there. So my mom took my son to a discount store. I don't remember exactly which one, like a Big Lots or Ocean State or something like that. And they came home with so many seeds and I planned it out. That's actually going to be our topic for today is how I planned out my outdoor garden. And it's my first time doing it. So take everything with a big grain of salt. But I'll tell you how I did it and what I plan on doing. So right now I have two different types of hot peppers, tomatoes, like the little yellow ones, cucumbers, uh, sunflowers, pumpkins. Shout out to Artificial Equinox for the pumpkin seeds. He also sent me some Carolina Reaper seeds. I'm really excited. And I got some squash and some watermelons. And everything's going decent so far. I had one set of hot peppers sprout earlier than everything else. And they look like they're dying now. Which, I mean, I have them in the tent. But they're just in a tent in a like a peat jiffy pot kind of thing. So I don't know what I did there. It's very possible. I, I was reading that you're supposed to transplant after the first set of true leaves, and that was like a week and a half ago. So I may have just like waited too long and they died. But everything else is looking good. So I'm going to get some more pepper seeds going. So since the weather's been nicer out and I've had a lot of time off the past two weeks, I've been working on the backyard. As I said before, I always kept my lawn mowed and kept everything looking nice, but never really put effort into it until this year. So we accomplished a lot. I got from the Isle of Shame at Aldi. <laughs> I got the tumbler composter and I got a bunch of garden edging. So I put the edges around the two corner gardens that are just going to be for flowers. I got the raised bed set up. And then I also have a little garden flower plot next to my porch stairs i got that all tilled and ready yeah it's been a lot of work i also we have a little fire pit and i literally just threw the bricks and the fire ring on top of the lawn and just did it like that we don't have fires too often and they're never that big we usually just like to do s'mores a couple times over the summer you know <laughs> But I actually took the time to take all the bricks and take the ring out and dig out the square dirt, put the bricks back in so everything's level and it's all set in the ground correctly. And it's looking really good. So I'm getting excited. We're going to probably wait another week or so. I think in the area where I live, I think the first day of frost safety is May 1st. So maybe another week or two. That said, it has been pretty warm here this week. But we're going to get all the plants outside, get the gardens going, and see what happens. I'm going to try my best. I haven't really grown vegetables in my life, so this is going to be my first time going for it. And that brings us into our topic for the week, which is how I planned what I'm going to grow on the outside. On the outside, like I'm in prison or something. <laughs> I'll make the basement grow forever. The... <laughs> 
So being the nerd that I am, I have two spreadsheets. One of them has a list of all the seeds I have. And then I also filled out like, I don't know what you would call it, like seed metadata. Like how many inches apart do they have to be? How many seeds do you plant at once? Any other little notes about it? Uh, what months you should plant? What months you should harvest? All of that. And I made just this giant matrix that's kind of like a cheat sheet for everything that I'm trying to grow. And then for the second spreadsheet, I just made like a calendar that, that was just a list of every week from now through like the beginning of October. And then I took the data from the first spreadsheet and I kind of filled in what I should be doing each week. Now, obviously this isn't hard data. Every grow is different. Every plant is different. I wanted to give myself a guideline just so I can kind of see what the ebb and flow of the workflow is going to be all summer. Cause I'm a busy dude. I got, I'll plan. I'll be like, Oh, is this a heavy gardening week? Maybe I'll, you know, not do something else or I'll make sure I, I allot the time for it. All right. So to go into it a little bit deeper, that's what she said. My first spreadsheet had seven columns and they are what type of plant it is, what month you should start them. When should they go outside? which for most plants would be the same month, but some plants require longer germination or people recommend that you do seedling stage indoors before putting them outside. So I wanted to have that data. So I know like, oh, this is when I plant the seed, but this is when it actually goes outside into the garden. Then the average amount of days it takes, and then the amount of plants that I can grow in all of the garden beds that I have. The next column is the spacing which helped me determine how many plants I could have in each garden bed. And then the last column is how deep you plant the seeds. So when making my kind of little calendar thing for the summer, I took the sow month and the outside month and then compared it to what it says for my local area for when the frost is going to end. And then on the calendar, I wrote down plant this seed this week, plant this seed this week, move this plant outside this week, move this plant outside this week. For the most part, it's essentially two clusters of plants where it's like the more like standard vegetables and then the watermelon squash like the more like gourd style plants are a bit off and it's essentially in two groups like that once i got the data down and then i took the average amount of days and then calculated how far out on the calendar the harvest would be and then wrote that down once again a lot of the plants have the same lifespan so it's really just like clusters and for the rest of the columns when everything's ready to go outside i'll have that data to figure out what should go where how how far spaced apart and everything now with the amount of seeds that i have or at least the amount of plants i have germinating right now i'm going to need more garden space so i wanted to get another raised bed but i also have a six foot privacy fence in my backyard and it's still holding up pretty well like i repair it every summer like any slats that are falling off or anything but we're at the point because it's been like 20 years we've had this fence or or more where the bottom of all the slats are starting to rot off and we're worried about the dogs using that gap to dig on, under the fence so i was talking to my mom about it and she had the idea to build the raised bed in front of the fence panels that have the most rot and then that way it has the dual purpose of having garden space along the edge of the yard while protecting the fence or at least protecting our dogs so that's a project i'm probably going to do over the next few weeks is go get some lumber i think i have everything else that i need go get some lumber and make a couple raised beds right now we have like cinder blocks and old tires in front of the holes in the bottom of the fence so it'd be nice to like get rid of those and have a garden bed instead also i want to use the tires for either like the pumpkins or the watermelons because i think you know any vine plant like that it would kind of look cool coming out of a tire <laughs> <laughs> like a swamp monster or something. But yeah, that's my plans for the next couple months. And then obviously in a week or two, when most of the plants have gone outside, I can start a new cannabis plant in the small tent. So yeah, a lot of work, but everything seems to be going smoothly. I'm definitely stepping outside of my comfort zone. Because you think I'm going to hit one year of growing cannabis in August. Up until this point, that's all I've done is like two by four tent with a couple plants in it, trying to get that down. And now I'm trying to really push myself this summer to develop my skills more. So yeah, I'm ex experimenting with all different types of things, plants outside of cannabis, 
different gardening styles, different garden, you know, indoor versus outdoor, all these different things. We'll see how it shakes out. The most important thing is that I come out of it as a better grower. A couple tomatoes would be nice too. <laughs> all right. So the last thing I wanted to talk about this week is Fallout Show came out. I've only watched the first episode so far, but I think it's pretty cool. I like how they did the style. The style feels very similar to the games. The costumes and everything look great. The world building seems good. There's a fight scene in the first episode where the dude actually takes a hit a jet while they're fighting. I'm like, that's cool because that's something you never really see in the video games because the characters aren't animated to do that. But yeah, I'm excited to keep watching uh, the, <laughs> the ghouls played by Walton Goggins. He's my favorite on Righteous Gemstones, where he played <laughs> was he Baby Billy. Uh, he's so funny in that role. And then also, I don't remember the actress's name, but the woman who played Jackie in Yellow Jackets, she's also one of the main characters. So that's cool. And there's a couple other familiar faces in the show. Like I saw uh, Zach Cherry. I mostly know him as the assistant in the bookstore in the first season of You. And obviously he... He pops up in other things here and there, but that's really where I can cite him right now. <laughs> so we'll have to see how the plot develops as the show goes on and how the characters develop. I mean, that's really the most important part. But after watching the first episode, I thought the whole style of it was really cool and it, it looks awesome. It feels like every little detail of the scenery and the costumes is all video game specific. So there's a lot of little like I would even call them Easter eggs, right? Because it's just pieces of the universe for that you know if you play fallout you know what jet is you know you know what a mr handy is <laughs> yeah i've been a fan of fallout for a long time i probably got into it a little bit later than my peers i played fallout 3 a little bit but by the time i played fallout 3 like most of my friends had beaten it already had beaten it for like years already but then once i played that i got really hooked and then i played new vegas I used to love to mod New Vegas on Steam. I can't remember the name, but they had one because, you know, the New Vegas map is so empty. So I made a mod where it adds like 200 locations to the map, just like little gas stations and raider huts and stuff. But it was really cool. I played a lot of Fallout 4. Uh, all right. So this is a disgusting story. But the day that Fallout 4 came out, my friend came over. We set up our TVs in my basement and then we set up two recliner chairs. We rolled... I think like 40 joints total. And then for, di for dinner, this is the gross part. For dinner, we each got a $5 Taco Bell box and then a $5 Popeye's box. And then we went to Moe's and just got chips and queso. So it was just like two dinner boxes, chips and queso. It was so dank. It was so good. I like barely eat fast food anymore, but those were the days. Nah. <laughs> but yeah, we stayed up all night playing. It was really fun. So I've beaten Fallout 3. I don't even know if I've beaten New Vegas. I think I got pretty close to the end. The problem I have with Bethesda games and a lot of RPGs in general is I always want the perfect build. You know, like I'm a I'm a nerdy math guy. Like I like to min-max my damage and shit. So then I'll get like three quarters of the way through the game and then be like, oh, I should have taken that perk like 20 levels ago and then start a new character, go from there. <laughs> I've played the beginning of Bethesda games a lot. Nah. <laughs> I have put a lot of hours in the Bethesda games, but since they're open world, you can just go nonstop and never actually beat the main campaign. And that's part of the charm of them, right? But yeah, I'm going to let you guys go. I got vegetables in seedling and germinating. I got... Mango Smile with a double head and ice latte looking good. I'm watching Fallout. I'm planning my outdoor garden. Make sure you check out our videos on YouTube. We've been really working hard on posting more long-form videos and not just our shorts. Thanks again to BGG for helping us out last week. <laughs> All right. Peace, y'all.